And so these are ready to go. We go to export games, hit OK. Again, we can rename that unsorted folder to Game Gear. Click on our folder and look for the King Gear icon, hit OK, and there you have it. So we're building our library of consoles and games. Now in all of these, uh, we can hit Add Home, and it's going to add home for all of us. So just hit OK. It's done. We'll be able to take that micro SD card and go back to the SNES and load it and see it work. So here we go again, load up Hackshi, put your ROMs in there. I like to do them one by one. You don't necessarily have to, but this is the Game Boy. And so we'll right click, download selected box art for games, go back, um, go to our Game Boy Advance games, wait for this to finish. And it selected the correct emulator for us. Here's two Game Boy Advance games. It's gonna process. Depending on how many games you add, this will take longer. And we're gonna download box art for selected games. Okay, so we could go to export games, USB host, new games are in the unsorted. So the reason I like to do one by one is because I can now call this Game Boy, Boy Advanced, and then I can just put all the games would already be there, but since I've created two game types, I have to go to this folder and drag the Game Boy games to the Game Boy folder. So if you add just a bunch of ROMs from different consoles, you're going to have to organize more on this window. So there's a Game Boy Advanced icon. Uh, somewhere here. And the Game Boy icon. We'll go ahead and go with the DMG version and then hit OK. All right, so the process for the rest of the consoles that aren't complicated, like the Genesis. We're going to hit download box out for selected games. So these games are pretty relatively simple. You just add games, export games in the appropriate folder, rename to Genesis, slash Mega Drive, whatever. Add your folder icon. And then hit OK. I'll do the work and then I like to close the version of Hackshi and reopen it because I've added, I add more than two games at a time. This is just for educational purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this part and do the rest, including N64.
So we have added our games to the micro SD card for all the CD-less consoles so we can close Hakshi, save the configuration. Make sure you eject the micro SD card properly so that there are no errors on the flash drive or SD card when inserting it into the SNES Classic because the SNES Classic will freeze or not load properly if the SD card is messed up or something. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and see what happens after loading all those games onto the SNES Classic. So here are all the consoles and folders that we just added. We forgot to add our folder images for NES, N64, and more SNES games. But uh, no big deal, we'll just go back and when we add more games, we can go ahead and change those folder icons. So here we have, um, let's go ahead and try N64. We'll load up, uh, we'll load up F0. I know this is the working ROM. Now, not, not all games work for the N64, but you just have to pick your games and see which one does and which one doesn't. Hard to play with one hand on the analog and buttons. So this game works fine. Let me go press the home button on the menu. To map your buttons, you're actually let me go back to to the game. You're going to press start and select at the same time. And this will load up RetroArch. Now RetroArch is your main core where you can map buttons and do all sorts of things. Pressing the B button will take you back to this menu here. We are looking for video if we're going to change our aspect ratio or our screen resolution should be here somewhere. It's not the one I'm looking for. And go back. Go to quick menu. Go to options. And here we can change the resolution, which I'm not going to mess with right now. Uh, to map your buttons, I go to the second icon and choose input and then uh, never change this so you don't, you can't access the uh, menu and never change, uh, where is it, never change the, this right here, the device index. If you change this device index, your gamepad is not going to work anymore. So never change it. If you happen to change it by accident, just make a transfer folder in your flash drive and reinstall the RetroArch core. And that will bring you back to be able to use your, your gamepad because I've had it where this gamepad stops working but the SNES original pad will work, but anytime I plug in this one, it won't work. So reinstall the RetroArch if that happens. So you should be able to also press select and down, and it should take you back to the home menu. So we'll load up one more game, and then we will do 
CD based games like the PlayStation, Sega CD, and the TurboGrafx CD. So we could load, uh, let's try Game Boy Advance. And we'll choose Advance Wars. Now, the reason why I chose to load this game is because sometimes when I exit this game, by the home menu or selecting down the menu going back to the menu will freeze or when I try to save it I will press Y and then sometimes it won't save could be just my micro SD card or something but right now it's saved just fine but when you get progress you want to make sure you always save in game once or twice before exiting with the home button uh, select down or even the reset button if you don't like with the PlayStation games you risk that little menu just kind of glitching on you and then you have to load from within the game anyway the save state won't work so that does it for this video at this we'll look at CD based games and how to add PlayStation, Sega CD and Turbo Graphics.